Let's see if 10 minutes, Deputy. Gorel Mahagut, Carlock. Minister, I'd like to reiterate the point made by other colleagues that this debate is no substitute for the debate which should have took place last week before the passing of the bill to dissolve IBRC. It was an incredibly arrogant and undemocratic tone that Fine Gael and Labour rammed through the bill before most had the chance to digest even the broader details and to consider the consequences. Government TDs heckled and laughed and were drunk on hysteria that at long last we got something tangible. They had little concern for debating it or even considering its implications, jubilant with the idea that they could sell this puck to the Irish people. There are many mistruths this government trots out on a regular basis to make itself sound successful or to make those who oppose them sound cynical or wrong. But there is one mistruth which has been peddled since last week, which cannot be brushed off as a desperate attempt to deflect. I speak of the claim that the so-called deal on the extension of the debt repayment is a fairer deal. You cannot have fair or unfairness. And that is what the entire premise of the Irish people being saddled with this debt is. It is unfair, and the answer is not to suck it up and say, well, life isn't fair, because it is morally wrong and it is not in the interest of the people of Ireland or Europe. This mistruth goes to the very heart of what is wrong with this government and tells us exactly how they have become Fianna Fáil Mark II. Now they are on the government benches. When the risk taken of the European banking sector came back to haunt them, Ireland was asked to bear the brunt and the good little boys and girls of Europe happily sacrificed the people of Ireland on the altar of European capitalism. We saved the European banking sector and a repayment has been 28 billion in cuts over the last five years. That's nearly two health services worth of cuts for our trouble. The average Irish citizen has been saddled with nearly 9,000 euros each, well in excess of the rest of Europe. The banking crisis, or more how we allowed it to be handled, ended up costing us around 40 billion euros, which is 25% of our GDP nearly 10 times the nearest country in these terms. We have been saddled with all this, all the cuts and taxes and austerity that came with it, and we have been insulted, treated like we have done something extraordinarily wrong by comparison with the rest of Europe. Every second night for weeks, RTE ran vox pops of German people saying how the Irish need to pay their way and they were sick of bankrolling us. We have been treated as pariahs, who needed to be taught a lesson, and instead of calling a halt to this, instead of saying no more, after Fianna Fáil put out the welcome mat, Fine Gael and Labour have given the ECB the whole place to do with as they pleased. Instead of saying, as thousands did last weekend, that this is not our debt and we should not be made to pay it, we have said we will pay every penny, every cent, and we will only ask for crumbs to try to fool our people along with us. Today, after this so-called deal, the Irish people still owe everything they owed from the promissory note. But now, with the added pleasure of owing interest, which is uncertain, and we'll likely see that in the end, the debt repayment will be doubled. I will likely not be around to see the day Ireland is free of this debt, but this government has copper fastened that all our children will be paying for it for many years to come. As Brian Lucy wrote of this tale, it's Frankfurt's way all the way. The government, as he said, have irrevocably linked the Anglo debt to the state. I'd like to believe that this isn't, isn't irrevocable, that we can change things, but certainly the intent of the government's move has been to copper fasten the debt and to make it sovereign. This may be a seismic shift, as Eamon Gilmore prophesied last June, but it is not a massive breakthrough for the Irish people. It certainly is a good deal for the ECB, who must be laughing to themselves, that our government is celebrating that we now have entered into a situation where a debt we should be paying is now guaranteed to not be written down and made its wholly sovereign now. It is nothing short of shameful that Fine Gael and Labour are either fools or cynical to sell it as something beneficial or fair for the Irish people. And the Kenny or Taoiseach made it clear from day one, we would not attempt to negotiate our debt, as he called it. And he said at the time, 
We will not be branded defaulters. We will honour our debt. Imagine any government going into negotiations, conceding the main argument that this is not our debt. Fianna Fáil and Labour were elected on the promise that they would negotiate a deal. They would seek a deal and burn bondholders. The only one who have been burnt are the Irish people and the generations to come. What will this mean, if anything, for the budgets of 2014 and 15, etc.? Will we see an easing of the austerity measures, and by how much? Last weekend, thousands of people, tens of thousands of people, marched, and the slogan at that march was, at this particular march, was, "This is not our debt." Many people realised the long-term repercussions for our people that you have saddled us with. The people haven't forgotten. The people are not being fooled. We will pay a heavy price down the road for short-term gains. Thank you. Thank you.